Hello friends, welcome back in the channel of Clinical Care Insight. Today we are going to start a new chapter in the subject of microbiology where we, we are going to discuss about the gastrointestinal gram-negative rods. Basically, this chapter, they contain only the, the you can say the diseases which is caused by the gram-negative rods, okay? But uh, this, the, there is one another chapter, okay, this one another chapter is called as the pathogen, pathogenic microorganism. Under the, this chapter, the similar, you can say the microorganisms are also uh, discussed, okay. So I am taking simultaneously both the chapter, fine. So I hope you all are uh, fine, good, I am also fine. So here is today's lecture outline. First, we will deal with the overview of overview of the gastrointestinal and you can say diseases or gastrointestinal gram negative rods fine then we will discuss about the pathogenic microorganism and then we will see about the salmonella okay and this is the first organism which we are going to discuss in this chapter and remember the every you can say the pathogenic organism are described under this following subheadings uh, they are described first in in, their, in, their, in terms of their introduction. Then we will talk about their general appearance. This means their morphology. Morphology means the appearance, external appearance. Then we are going to discuss about their classification. Okay. Then we will discuss uh, the detection. Okay. Then culture and the growth, and then their pathogenicity. In which way they are harmful? How they are? You can say invading in our body, and. At last, we will discuss also about the treatment and the prevention. Fine. Now, about the gastrointestinal gram-negative rods, or you can say the gastrointestinal diseases, just remember that the bacteria is classified on various bases. The one of the bases is to divide the bacteria uh, on the basis of the stain you can say taking. If bacteria will uh, take the gram stain, we are saying those bacteria as a gram positive bacteria. If bacteria is not, uh, you can say, taking the gram stain, we are referring those bacteria as the gram negative bacteria. Now, gram positive bacteria, they are less harmful as compared to the gram negative bacteria. Okay, if we talk about the gastrointestinal diseases, then this gram, uh, you can say negative rods, they are the most prevalent disease causing inside the gastrointestinal tract. Oh, well, this is the one thing. Second thing is, this gastrointestinal, uh, you can say negative rods, gram negative rods, they are basically the facultative anaerobes. Then what I mean by the facultative anaerobes? Facultative anaerobes means they can survive in both the environment. Okay, if there is a presence of oxygen, they can survive. If there will be no in presence of oxygen, means the anaerobic condition, they will also survive. They are the facultative anaerobes. The another thing about this, uh, you can say gram-negative rods, they are causing, you can say, multiple diseases, but the two diseases which we, are, we have to discuss in this chapter, the one is called as the gastroenteritis, okay? Gastro Entritis and another disease is called as the typhoid fever, also called as the enteric fever. You got the points? No problem. And uh, this is caused by the salmonella. This is caused by the salmonella. So make the heading salmonella. First heading. The first bacteria which we are going to discuss uh, in, in reference of gastrointestinal infection is the salmonella. Salmonella. Now, Salmonella is one gram negative. Write down first the, about the introduction. They are gram negative. Okay. They are facultative anaerobes. Okay, and it, it comes under the family, it is comes under the family of, yeah, intero, intero, bacteriaceae family, 
it comes under the entero bacteriaceae family another thing about this salmonella is they are non acid fast bacteria they are the non acid fast bacteria means they are not you can say taking the acid fast strain they are known acid fast bacteria and uh, it is first discovered in the pig's intestine okay it is discovered first time in the pig's intestine by a one you can say bacteriologist and his name is d e salmon his name is yeah you should write it down it can be asked in mcq it is called d e salmon d e salmon he is the one who discovered first time or you can say observe first time this salmonella bacteria in the pigs yeah in the pig intestine no it is about the pig but what about the human isn't it so in the humans it is discovered by the another you can say microbiologist and his name is carl elbert his name is the carl elbert write it down the another microbiologist is carl elbert okay and he seen a live salmonella bacteria in the humans okay and which part of the humans yeah it is seen in the pear patches of intestine yeah pear patches all her intestine and spleen okay pear patches in the intestine and spleen so it is about the introduction of salmonella bacterium remember two th three things more okay they are you know that any bacteria which comes inside the gastrointestinal tract they must you can say reside over our you can say the ingested food particles isn't it and it means if they are residing on the food particles it will perform the fermentation okay it will utilizes those nutrition and this bacteria utilizes those nutritions okay and it uh, produce a uh, which type of gases yeah it produces the sulfur or you can say the sulfide so it is a basically a hydrogen sulfide producing bacterium okay it is a put at the star mark and write there it is a hydrogen hydrogen sulfide producing bacterium okay just because they producing the hydrogen sulfide uh, you can say gas it take a one special kind of strain okay it can also you can say we can culture this bacteria on the maconkey agar okay and there are other techniques there which we will discuss in the detection okay under the detection which we are going to discuss but for a while you just keep these things in your mind that this salmonella bacteria is gram negative okay non spore formation they are not forming the spores writing down no spore okay no spore they are gram negative they are facultative facultative anaerobes means they can survive in the both type of environment aerobic as well as the anaerobic now they comes under the family of entero bacteriaceae family okay entero bacteriaceae family they are non acid they are no non acid fast bacterium and it is first discovered by the d e salmon a bacteriologist and his name is derived by the name of this bacteriologist salmon who discovered first time in the pig's intestine now in the humans it is first observed by the carl elvich okay in the human pears patches and the spleen and the one of the most characteristic things you forget about everything just remember the one thing Uh, as far as this microbiology the, the, their laboratory you can say point is concerned you just remember they are producing hydrogen sulfide they are producing basically the hydrogen sulfide understood no problem now 
and you know that how we are acquiring this bacterium that's a central question yeah how we are acquiring this bacterium is it present if it is our part of normal flora yeah you've seen the lectures of the normal flora normal flora are the those set of microorganisms which are naturally present inside our body and they are not generally the harmful unless until they are not displaced from their natural location they are not harmful so these bacteria salmonella is they is, is they are the part of our normal flora yeah no yeah it is not our part of normal flora we generally acquired this bacteria Okay, we generally acquire this bacteria either from the cross infection. You know the meaning of cross infection? Yeah. Cross infection from either from animals to the humans or from the contaminated foods. Contaminated foods. Okay. So these are the two possible ways by which uh, these microorganisms enters in our body, either by through the contaminated food, okay, or contaminated drinking, as well as through the cross infection from the humans, sorry, from the animals to the humans, from animals to the humans. And generally, uh, the one of the carrier is the chicken. If we, if you eat the chicken without the boiling. Yeah, if you, you will not eat chicken without boiling, but if the chicken is eaten without boiling, okay, person will suffer from this salmonella because chicken are the carrier. Chicken, they are the carrier of this salmonella. Got the point? No problem. Now, once we uh, discussed about the introductory part of this salmonella let's go and discuss their morphology and it's the end it's because they're no as they are bacteria yeah salmonella they are the bacteria so it's it must have the bacterial characteristics isn't it but it is it have some special characteristics as well it have some special parts as well Okay, which we are going to see under the morphology. So morphology means, yeah, external appearance. External appearance, which we cannot observe by our naked eye. Am I right? Which we cannot observe by our naked eye. If you, if you take the example of this duster, morphologically you can say, okay, this duster, this surface is a smooth surface, this is a rough surface, isn't it? This is a dusty surface. And it is observed by our naked eye, but bacteria size is so small that you cannot absorb by your naked eye. And also, if you directly put the bacteria, a sample, you take the sample and directly put it on the uh, microscope, you cannot absorb. Yeah. So what, what are the ways, how we can, you, you can see the, this bacterium? We can see, see the bacterium by coloring them. If we color them, if we stain them, in, in, you can say, in appropriate word, we are calling staining the bacteria means basically we are coloring the bacteria. If we color the bacteria, then we can easily see on the microscope, okay, which we can easily see in the microscope. So morphology means the appearance, their external appearance. So write the another heading. Another heading is morphology. Morphology. Now, you know, it is a gram-negative bacteria, means this is a bacterial cell wall and you know, bacteria have a cell wall, isn't it? And they are non-capsulated, remember, they don't have any capsule, they are the non-capsulated bacterium. Write it down, it's better to write non-capsulated. Then really what happened, the most of the things we, we thought, okay, it can, I, we can remember this thing forever. And we are generally not writing. Okay, if, we, if you, you write the things, okay, maybe you forget, the, the, the forget, this for, you can say, forgetting the things is a protective mechanism of our brain. If you remember everything, you will, you are a man, isn't it? 
So our brain, one of the, you can say, protective mechanism is the forget the things. Okay, we are eliminating those, you can say, the undesirable things, which is not exactly necessary. It's our brain, you can say, adaptability, and it's a crucial thing which is performing by our higher system. And, and this is not uh, and this is not vestigial, that's the useful for us. So it's better to write down whatever things you heard sometimes, new words, new terminology, it's better to write, okay? So whenever you open your notebook and you see the things, okay, you immediately recall, immediately recall the things, okay, fine. Now, they are the non-capsulated. It have only the cell wall and the cell membrane. So the cell wall of gram-negative as well as the gram-positive bacteria is made up of either peptidoglycan, peptidoglycan, both protein part as well as the protein part as well as the carbohydrate part. It is, and it, in the case of gram-negative, the, you can say, the size of, the thickness of the, you can say, the membrane, cell wall, is, yeah, the cell wall thickness is less as compared to the gram-positive bacteria. Fine, no problem. And here the bacteria have their genetic material which is not organized properly and one extra genetic material referred as the plasmids and other other structures which is necessary. Now, the things which we, we have to pay attention here in their morphological characteristic, first is their shape. Okay, first things which we are going to discuss is their shape. The shape of Salmonella bacteria is the rod shape. It's shaped, it is a rod shape. Fine? Now, and about them, you know that it is a gram negative. So if we talked about the gram strain, it is a gram negative. If we talked about their size, their length is five micrometer in length. They are five micrometer in the length, and uh, they are they, they are the motile. So first one is the shape. It is a rod shape. Okay. If we talked about their motility, either they are motile or non-motile. Remember, most of the Salmonella bacterium are motile, except the two. Write this statement. Write this statement that most of the Salmonella is motile, except except two. Okay, very important to remember the one is called as the Salmonella plural, another one is called as the Salmonella ganorum. Okay, the one is called as Salmonella plural, another one is called as the Salmonella ganorum. Now, this is about their morphology. This is about their morphology. And uh, you should write it down their, you can say, length. Their length is in micrometer. And how much? It is a 5 micrometer in length. How much? Five micrometer. This is their morphological appearance. Apart from that, now we have to look about their colony morphology. Okay? This is about their, you can say, general morphology. This is Salmonella. In general morphology. Now, in order to see, we have to yeah, we have to basically culture this bacteria. So for culturing, now we are discussing their colony morphology. So another morphology is the colony, colony morphology. Now, in the colony morphology, the first things which we have to understand here is first on appearance on the agar, how they are appeared appearance on agar gate. So basically when you take in the sample and you when you um, culture this bacteria okay on the on the uh, agar agar media okay agar media you will 
see this bacteria they are colonized basically and this shows they appear colorless they appear the colorless fine it appear colorless write it down colorless fine why they are colorless why they are not taking the agar plate they are you can we are basically calcing this Uh, salmonella bacteria on the agar plate and this agar plate their colony shows the colorless why because they are not a lactic acid forming bacteria my friends they are the yeah hydrogen sulfide producing bacteria so how it can take the you can say show the color on the agar plate it cannot so basically just because yeah just because uh, they, they are not lactic forming bacteria so they appear colorless they are not a lactic acid bacteria got the points no problem now the another things is the xcd on another colony which we are seeing appearance on appearance on xcd now what's the mean by the xcd xcd stand for xylose lysine deoxycholate agar okay you should write it the full name once again i am saying write down xylose lysine deoxycholate agar in this agar it appear red with the black center red with the black center bacterium appear the red with black see center got the points no problem now so hand by hand we will also discuss here about their antigen about their antigenic morphology so they are antigen morphology basically this salmonella bacterium it produces the three types of antigen okay three types of antigen and it is the antigen of this bacteria which is a you can say a virulence they are the they have the uh, you can say disease causing capacity fine so the antigens are the one who is responsible for causing the diseases in the intestine okay in the intestine now they have as i said there are three main type of antigen is present the first one is called as the h or flagellar antigen second one is called as the o or somatic antigen and last one is called as the surface antigen so write down the first antigen h h or also called as flagellar antigen so first antigen is h or flagellar antigen <laughs> fine now second antigen is the o or also called as yeah somatic antigen somatic antigen fine now last one is the surface antigen last one is a surface antigen now some of these antigen they are a heat labile means if you heating them they will destroy themselves means they are heat sensitive okay and some of them they are not a heat labile bacteria you can antigen of this bacteria so the heat labile bacteria heat labile basically antigen of this bacteria is the h1 okay and o is a heat stable this bacteria it is a heat labile it levide means they will deactivate if you provide the 56 degrees celsius or above to that temperature this antigen of bacteria will destroy themselves but this o or somatic antigen it is a naughty kind of antigen and it is the one uh, who is the more you can say pathogenic fine and this o or somatic antigen they are a heat stable heat stable and where they are present they are present here my friends this peptidoglycan layer they are present over the 
peptidoglycan layer or basically they are forming the peptidoglycan layer of this salmonella bacterium and peptidoglycan layer is what it is a still wall of this bacteria fine now about the surface antigen there are three surface antigen if you want you can write it uh, down about there there you can say this antigen the one is called as the f m v f m v the surface antigen is the three types f m v one is f one is m one is a v and both three undergo the different different kind of mechanism to cause a disease to cause a disease so this is all about the morphology of salmonella bacteria once again the morphology means the appearance of the bacterium appearance of the bacteria and as i said the first we discussed the general morphology general morphology you can say consist of their shape so their shape is basically which kind they are the rod shaped bacterium if we talked about their stain then they are a gram negative stain gram negative bacteria basically and if we talked about the mortality they remember this headline that most of the salmonella bacterium they are a motile except the two and you, you have to remember the first one is called as salmonella uh, pulurum another one is called as a salmona gallinum fine uh, and uh, most of the salmonella bacteria they are non capsulated they lack the capsule over their uh, cell wall got the points if we talked about the length it's a 5 micrometer and now it's is the their general morphology then we discussed about their you can say colony morphology means if you uh, put it this bacteria on the uh, medium or you can say culture medium then what 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 you can say characteristics it shows first characteristics which 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 is present here if you put this bacterium on the agar plate it's it appear colorless why because they are not a lactic acid forming bacteria they are not a lactic acid forming bacteria means it will not show any color they are, it, it is a basically the hydrogen sulfide forming bacteria now another one is their appear appearance on xcd xcd is stand for the yeah it's a xylose xylose lysi deoxycolate agar and in this agar bacterium appear red with the black center fine now that we discussed about their antigenic morphology their antigenic morphology is like uh, it have the three different types of antigen the one is called as the h or flagellar antigen next one is called as the o or somatic antigen and last one is called as a surface antigen now the first one h or flagellar antigen it is basically the heat levi means heat sensitive the another one is the o or somatic antigen which is basically a heat stable fine and uh, the last one is the surface antigen which is a dif three different type the one is called f antigen m antigen and v antigen now once we discussed about the morphology let's deal with their classification